Hey guys, decided to do an interesting video. A little bit different from some of the other ones, but at least still diving into the same project management, project controls, looking at costs, schedules, but this time of the NASA Apollo mission, and more generally just NASA in general. So I think we can just dive right in. If you like this stuff, I'm probably going to do a whole series on some extra details related to, I've got information from 1960, 1973. I'm going to go build it out to have some more information going on. But what are we looking at? This right here is the Apollo program actual cost at that time, $28 billion. Here's a nice little spread of that money, how it was spent throughout all the years. Again, we're looking at the 60s and finishing off in 1973. I think the last Apollo mission was actually, might have been in, I mean, 72, I'm not sure exactly. I've actually got that somewhere else. But what well, we got, $28 billion. How was it spent? Again, we're talking mega projects and mega projects require project management well, project controls that I love. And what do you do? You break things out into manageable pieces with an organization structure, WBS structure. And so what did they do? We've got all these little buckets in here. We're actually little budget elements within the NASA budget. And I believe all these were actually had separate managers as well, management systems. If we look at each one separately, again, this is a whole development program, indirect support. Now, the Apollo program was almost more a construction project than it was actually a space mission. Because if you just look at the indirect aspects of it, you're looking at about $7.3 billion. And this is a lot of the early on stuff. This is like the facilities, this is the construction. They didn't have any, they had to go build all this stuff. And yeah, it was, you know, all that stuff had to be managed in little buckets. I wish I had all the little details in a nice database to show you, but I don't, but it's all right. The, um, after they had all the say indirect facilities ready, at least under construction, they had to go build actually the launch vehicles and the spacecraft. And the launch vehicle, obviously it's the Saturn V. Everybody knows about it. Everybody loves it. I mean, geez, this is what, 50 years later, 60 years, oh God. Yeah, <laughs> 50 some odd. And Saturn V, obviously the cost just for the specific Saturn V rockets was $6.6 .6 billion, but the whole pro program with some of the precursors that they had like the Saturn I, some other bits, six nine 9.4 billion total. And again, this is also some early costs as well that they had to incur. The actual missions that they sent were not until 1968, 69, and 70. Obviously, the big moon mission was Apollo 11 in 1969. I think it was in July that year. So yeah, that's all the Saturn V stuff. There is a bit of a personal relationship that I have not with actually the project, but uh, the contracts is Boeing, North American Aviation, uh, we've got Douglas and IBM. The middle two stages were actually built down the street from where I grew up in Seal Beach and Huntington Beach. And there's a lot of pride every time I, I used to ride my bike by those facilities all the time. And obviously they weren't building this, the rockets then, but you at least knew that they were there or that they had done it in the past. The spacecraft, we've got the command module. North American Aviation, $3.8 billion. We've got the lunar module, Grumman Aviation, or Grumman Aircraft, $2.4 billion. And the guidance computer, this is, gets a lot of press because of the some of the IT aspects that we're now dealing with, and somebody's actually restoring one of these. Again, a little bit of upfront costs where they had to develop all the stuff before they actually went on the missions. And then finally, we get to support development operations. This is where you actually see the big uh, little sp spikes in costs related to just the operations of how they managed all the specific missions. And obviously when that tailed off, a lot of stuff went to the shuttle program, went to the Skylab programs, and that's probably where I'll go into later. Had a bit of fun developing this dashboard. I love the WBS structure, looking at costs throughout times. I'm actually probably gonna do a video where I talk about how I developed it, how I actually built some of these little tool tips to bring in an image, a little commentary, some costs, as well as just the interactivity where you could actually click an item and you could actually see all that. Um, there we go. So you can actually see this is the total profile for that main WBS of spacecraft. 
and then the subset of just looking at the, in this one, this is the command module. So yeah, anyway, I love this stuff and there actually is a lot of great information that NASA has just freely available on the websites and maybe I'll publish that as well. As always, thanks a lot and if you like these, subscribe and thanks.